Technology has come in and played a, uh, a cycle or two. And what we've done as an industry and as a consumer is we've taken these cycles of digital that's happened, this technology, these technology cycles in the market. And what we've done is, is we've picked out the parts that we like and the parts that we don't like. I grew up in construction, roofing houses, and we had to be on the job site at 7, 6.30 or 7. But, you know, I, I, I literally woke up at 6.22 and just threw a pair of pants on and just, you know, jumped in the truck and landed on a roof. So I, I didn't get up at, you know, 4.30 back then. Not till here recently, maybe a year and a half ago, maybe, I started waking up at 4.30. Um, just because my business has grown to a certain point where I need to squeeze, I, got, I had to find a, another place of some time. You know, I had to figure out where I was gonna, you know, get some more stuff done. You know, with everything that has to be done. So um, I started waking up at 4:30, not because I've been doing it all my life, just because I've trying to find another couple hours in the day. So. No, that's good, man. That's good. No, I, uh, I've been selling real estate for 20 years, um, 19 actually, 19 and a half, I guess, something like that, since 2002. And um, got in when I was 20 years old, uh, made a lot of money really quickly. The market exploded, lost it all in the crash, and uh, went back to roofing houses, actually. And um, through that, man, just... Um, I tell you, I, I like lost everything, went bankrupt, sleeping in my car, eating out of people's refrigerators. Um, my thoughts were helping people buy and sell, you know, which I did that for two decades now, but you know, now it's even turned into helping agents, you know, and who knows where it'll go from here. You know, maybe I can take my sales experience and sales knowledge and help people in other industries at some point, you know, um, but uh, it's all about helping people, you know, how many people you help, um, you know, regardless if they can benefit your business or not, you know, just help everyone, you know, the, the more you try to help, you know, and you build your brand around that, you know, when you build your brand around being the hardest working person who just loves to help people, people love that. They gravitate to you. You know, if you're an honest professional person, you don't care what you do, or what you sell, they're going to want to do business with you. Um, when you're not trying to pressure them into doing a deal, you know, you're just there to help them do whatever they're going to do anyway. People are already buying and selling. It, everything that's happening that's changing is happening really for the better of real estate agents. In my, in my eyes, in my view, uh, it's just things that are making our lives easier and easier. You know, e even down to Zillow. I mean, Zillow has knocked out a lot of the searching process that I used to have to go through. You know, clients can go on Zillow and tell me what they want to look for, what, what properties they want to see. You know, we, we want to see these properties, you know, well, thank you. Thank you for that list. Let me set those, <laughs> let me set those up and, and we'll go take a look at them. Yeah. So, you know, it, every step of the way, I don't see anything on the horizon, you know, that is going to replace agents. Everything I see uh, is pro agents. There may be entities out there trying to figure it out and they may get to a certain point with it. You know, nobody knows what the future is going to hold. Um, so, you know, it's all very, it's all very interesting to me to watch. Technology has come in and played a, uh, a cycle or two. And what we've done as an industry and as a consumer is we've taken these cycles of digital that's happened, this technology, these technology cycles in the market. And what we've done is, is we've picked out the parts that we like and the parts that we don't like. You know, like we went through a couple rounds of, you know, buyers basically choosing random agents online. Um, and that ended up not being such a great thing at the end of the day, you know, percentage wise. Uh, you know, so now the market's leaning back towards picking an agent they know, like, and trust and has created this bond with and this relationship with and feels like they're a friend or family member. 
uh, we're leaning back towards that. So that's one thing, okay, we may take the, okay, I'm gonna find all my properties on Zillow, but then I'm gonna take that list and give it to my a local agent I have a relationship established with instead of picking uh, an agent on Zillow or one of these online platforms, you know? So, so they're picking and choosing, you know, what, what makes their life easier with technology. Hey, they just want agents that care and will stay in touch with them, answer their phone, let them know when stuff's not going right, smooth the deal out for them, you know, get them what they feel like is the best negotiated deal, right? So I think those are the yep. things that consumers really want, you know, and, and have really always wanted. I don't think it's really changed a lot over the years. You know, we're just in a, we're just in a different playing field, you know, for these. I just want to know what they're looking for and why they want to buy. What are you looking like? Why do you want to buy? You know, why, why are you doing this and what are you looking for? Those are the two main questions, right? And are you working with an agent currently already? You know, if this is a buyer I don't know, not a past kind of referral, they're just out of the blue, off the streets, uh, internet lead, you know, called off a sign or, you know, saw something online and called me, I don't know this person. I wanna know if they're already talking to other agents, if they're working with somebody. Let's go ahead and clear that up right now before we go any further. Why are you buying? you know, and, and what are you looking for, right? Because the thing is, is I will do the search for you. I'll go online, I'll go on MLS, I'll pull up every property in your criteria, I'll hand pick the best deals and I'll email them to you. That's my go-to right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for that first. If they say, if they say, well, I've got these properties already picked out, I've been looking on Zillow or wherever, I've got these properties picked, cool, send me those MLS numbers. Let me, let me see if I can add something else to those MLS numbers that are uh, similar that maybe you missed. Right, and either way it goes, we'll definitely let me definitely try to set these up for us to go look at. Just the just the just the task of just dealing with the showings, you know, setting up all the showings, dealing with appointments, and and working on that, having people cancel, right? Having people cancel, having people um, not show up, you know, uh, no shows, and stuff like that. You know, they get they get tired of it before they even get to a contract. Then if you get to a contract. Okay, now you really need a third party. You need a third party to, to help you negotiate this deal. Um, you know, the, the, you know, you as the seller, I mean, you can sit there and say, oh, I'll take this and I'll take that. You know, and some, some, some sellers can pull this off. They're, they're good negotiators or good business people and stuff, but your average person is not a great negotiator and they can leave a lot of money on the table. Whereas if you have that third party, um, you know, agent uh, representing you to help you negotiate that deal and get the best price. If you look at the fact that business is unlimited because closings happen every single day, forever, regardless of market conditions, then, you know, you can start to break down how this business really is unlimited in terms of you can't talk to every single person in your market ever in your life. Okay, that would be the goal. If, if, and then once you did, you'd have to turn right around and do it all over again because everybody changed their mind after five seconds. So it just creates a scenario where if you look at the business correctly, it's an unlimited abyss uh, of work to do. Take the deals out of the equation and start to concentrate on database growth. But people don't understand how much work really goes into this on a foundational point of view or a strategic, you know, technical point of view on actually closing the deals. I mean, you know, let's go juggle, you know, I, I would love for someone out there who thinks real estate agents don't do much and come stand a, a, a 15 minutes over here in my office and juggle the things that I have to juggle just to try to maintain and just help everyone feel comfortable and keep everybody happy. Uh, make sure that they feel like uh, they're getting the best service and they're getting the best deal. Um, there's a lot, like if somebody's making 12,000 and they didn't return your calls for a week during the transaction somewhere, you're just like, what in the world? Like this person does not deserve $12,000. They literally went MIA for a week and here they are, we're at closing and they're getting a $12,000 check, you know? So yeah, no, I, I totally understand it. That We were talking about it before the show. You got to have this drive that no one can teach you. You know, you've got to have it inside of you that you're going to do this. 
you know, and you've got to be dependable. You have to answer your phone. You have to be responsible. <laughs> you have to be professional. You know, when people make you mad, sometimes you have to bite your lip, right? Sometimes you have to, 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 to not show those emotions, you know? Um, I mean, it, 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 you know, you, you got to wear it on your sleeve and, and, and let things go uh, in certain situations. And you got to know when to get mad. There's definitely times to get mad and there's times to, to let things go. It's called being professional. You know, I've had the same lender for over 10 years. And it, it, when he tells me that he has never let me down, if he can't do a deal, he tells me this is not going to work. If he tells me I can make this work, it always comes through. We might as well check cash on the on the contract when, when we're dealing with this guy because he just he it always happens, you know. But I didn't just I didn't go out and interview a bunch of different lenders to find this guy. It was through trial and error. So as it's the same thing, you know. I, I used I used a lender. Didn't like the experience. Use a different lender. Didn't like the experience. Use a lender had a great experience, and then the next deal not a great experience. So he's out. Finally, I find this lender. Boom! It's just been like clockwork. Now there was one hiccup one time where he got really busy. He didn't answer a couple of my clients' calls. I quit using him for a second. He called me months later and says, "Hey." What's the deal here? I said, well, listen, man, you're too busy to help my clients. I'm not going to, I mean, as good as you are, I got to have service too. And since that moment, that was about six or seven years ago, never had a problem since then with him answering the phone or helping my clients. But it's the same thing with consumers looking at agents. You know, you got to get in there and get some experience. You don't know what you're looking for until you've got it. You know, so so get in there and, and you know, you can talk to an agent. You can interview an agent. You can say, hey, are you going to answer your phones? Are you going to be dependable? Do you have experience? You can ask all those, you know, typical uh, interview questions. But at the end of the day, they're I mean, they're going to tell you whatever you want to hear. They're going to tell you whatever they think that they need to say to get the business. And then only their their real experience. The, the, the experience through the transaction is going to be the till tell the real tell if they're really who they say they are, you know. So you you know it, it's hard to say okay what do you ask them or how do you pick one. You just got to get in there, get your hands dirty, and do a couple transactions, and then you'll know. And if they're not a great agent, you didn't like the experience, you move on to another agent, and then you move on to another agent until you find one that you really like, and then you stick. When not tell them you have a buyer, but in your mind. You know, tell yourself I have a buyer, okay, just to build that same amount of conviction and confidence. It's like it's like people say, okay, I, I'm I'm living on Zillow leads, okay, and I'm spending a hundred dollars a lead or fifteen dollars a lead or twenty dollars a lead for Zillow. Okay, but these are warm leads, Ricky, and I feel comfortable calling these leads, even though when you call the leads, they don't know who you are, what you're calling about, any, any sort of the matter, you're right back to making cold calls. So they're buying Zillow leads to get around the cold calling activities because they're scared to make calls. <laughs> so they're spending all this money, scared to make calls, just to turn around and make calls. But what I'm saying is, is you can actually target the exact property owners you want for two cents. You can say, okay, I want this subdivision, I'm gonna call all the all the all the property owners in this subdivision you can get all their contact information for two cents you can use the same philosophy there if you need to, it to be a Zillow lead to feel comfortable enough to call them what you need to do is pick out the exact properties you want to sell get their contact information for two cents and then pretend like they're a Zillow lead